Okay, so this time let us discuss NECP 2015 uh, flexural strength requirement for beam. So this will be actually the starting topic for us to recognize and appreciate uh, a topic like singly reinforced concrete beam and so on. So let, let us start first. No, paano ba muna? Ano ba muna yung mga requirement for flexure so that we can appreciate no yung sa mga sabi kong topics. Okay, so let us get ready to be neurorized. Okay, so here are the codes. Under section 419, under concrete design and durability requirements, mentioned here po, no, no, this section shall apply to concrete, including properties to, be used, properties to be used for design and durability requirements. Okay, so ito po yung mga concrete design properties na kala natin i-consider whenever we design or investigate concrete beams. Ngayon, under section 419.2.1, under specified compressive strength, that is what we call FC prime, shall be specified in the construction documents. So, ito po kasi yung pinaka main element of, uh, para, as a parameter for us to start the design investigation and analysis of a concrete mapa beam, mapa slab, mapa foundation, or, or mapa column. So, usually, ano ba yung mga limitations ng ginagamit natin FC prime? For normal and lightweight as a general application, ang minimum po na ginagamit natin dyan in design practices and of course in construction practices is 17 megapascal and the maximum is actually is uh, walang limit because it is dependent on the structural designers on record, okay, engineer on record to choose whatever uh, the design strength that is uh, capable for resisting the structure that is being designed either uh, what we call SMRF special moment seizing frame, may time tinatawag na moment seizing frame, ordinary moment seizing frame, and so on. Marami, ano, may eccentrically brace, etc. So, ang pinakalis natin 17 megapascal. So, wh what is that particular reason? As a lower than 17 megapascal, the strength is already for mortars. O yung tinatawag natin palitada na lang. So, we cannot, it is not acceptable by practice and also uh, observation of, of of course with respect to practice as also amended by the code no? and code is actually the law itself so you cannot use a mortar strength bay, a plaster type base strength of uh, sexual element since it will not exhibit the, the the target performance of the structure under either, either uh, under excitation or what you call the optimum or the maximum strength that the structure can, can provide as a capability. Now also, at, at, usually dito tayo nagpa-fall under, ano, yung special moment frames that I will discuss uh, in one of my video lectures, what are those type of moment frames. So under normal normal weight, the usual case, so we are using 21 megapascal. Siyempre, medyo higher requirement because of the seismic activity that we have in our country. So therefore, there will be a uh, larger uh, minimum specifications kasi a larger strength is the more desirable pagdating po sa target performance. Now, modulus of plasticity, this is very important. Now, kung naalala po ninyo sa crack and uncrack, we considered for normal weight concrete under E sub C of 4,700 square top FC prime in megapascal. Now, what if that is not normal weight? So, we can calculate in this way. So, weight of the concrete, the, the density, in between 1,440 and 2,560 kilogram per cubic meter, so raised to 1.5 times 0.043 square top FC prime. So, ipa-plug in nyo lang po kung ano yung value W sub C that is actually, is either given me the problem, most, most, but most likely it will be uh, taken from testing experimental values for the densities. Now, ito rin po yung sinabi natin code before, no? Yung reiterate ko lang, yung for lightweight concrete. So, ito po yung lambda. Okay, lambda factor that, that should be multiplied. Kasi usually, uh, we are the interest of what particular concrete is uh, is in use, no? Pag lightweight, we need to calculate this. Uh, we need to use this following data. But pag uh, wala po dyan sa table yung exact nung condition, 
So we can verify naman ta calculation of lambda that is uh, that that is not exact. Although sabi naman dito it can be linearly interpolated, ano? Madali na ma-perform 'yan. But if the measure average splitting tensor strength of lightweight concrete, it is actually for the field of doubt condition. So after testing, it's used to calculate lambda. Laboratory test shall be conducted in accordance with ASTM. So specifically, this equation is from C33M to establish the value of F sub CT and the corresponding value of F sub CM and lambda shall be calculated as this equation. Where the concrete mixture tested in order to calculate lambda shall be representative of that to be used in the work. Kasi usually yung lambda na yan can be stated as ano eh, one side property or uh, two, uh, multiple side property or pag sabi natin one side property that's what we call isogonal and kapag nagkakaroon ng multiple properties that's what we call orthogonal and usually whenever we start our design it is uh, in default case we are condition we are using isogonal since we are treating that the material is composed of a uh, a particular property that is consistent throughout but in the case of doubt that you can use lambda in every cases of different values then you may do so so that as long as it will re best represent your structural analysis in question now let's move on one of the very important topic of today's discussion the sectional strength i am limited only to discuss flexural scenes uh, it will be also catering shear, it can be also catering uh, connection details, etc. So let us talk about first sectional strength. I think this is usually the, the main investigative portion on designing, analyzing, and investigating a, uh, a beam. No, do time exercise a beam, then we after this we cannot proceed to, to slabs and uh, column. Okay, so don't forget that under this section 422.1.1. Uh, what are being analyzed in a particular member? The flexural. Kita nyo po, inuna si flexural eh. That's how important flexural strength is. Kasi without flexural strength, this is uh, one one of the main capability of a concrete beam. Kasi it, it, it falls under uh, categorization of the compression tension allocation. So therefore, it is very important uh, to identify the flexural strength. Followed by the axial, the one-way shear strength, two-way shear strength. Usually, this is for the column. I don't know, this is for the slab, either one way, two way, drop, or whatsoever. Dami po type nyan. Torsional strength, of course, their ability to twist. Na, uh, that is lateral twisting, as we call it. Kasi iba pa po yung rotation. Bearing, of course, uh, usually in foundation. And of course, in between connection of foundation and column. And as well as in between connection of beam and the column. And as well as shear friction. Kasi it's very important to consider this. Lalo na kung meron ka tinatawag na connection joints. And it always be subjected for shear. So shear failure may happen if that is not designed correctly. For 22.1.2, there's what we call section 423. Now, sinabi po dito that the sectional strength requirement of this chapter shall be satisfied unless the member region of the members designed in accordance to section 423. Ano po ba section 423? It talks about strat and tie. So si strat and tie kasi is a special topic to consider pagdating po sa design of flexural member na uh, it can be a deep beam or and so on depending on the, the parameter that is satisfied. So it will be of different case. Also in 422.1.3, dito po ipapasok yung fee value as a reduction. You discuss ko in one of my video lecture that in, in our code uh, currently use, uses the USD or ultimate stress design or also known as strength design or pwedeng tawagin load resistance and factor design. That we need to increase the sigma should be equivalent to an increased value of force divided by a decreased value of area, for sectional area to be specific. So, in this category, for us to decrease the area, there should be a reduction factor phi no, that should be uh, multiplied by its nominal condition. I will separately discuss this in our next video lecture as we progress in the singly reinforced concrete beam analysis. So, that would be our starting point to consider those three factors. Okay? So, of course, as a main requirement, again, of flexural uh, under 422.2.1, equilibrium and strength compatibility. So, of course, whenever we investigate design, no, it is very important to know what is equilibrium. Should be satisfied at, at, at all times. And note that uh, to, to, to apply the code, the entire section, the strain in concrete 
and plant pieces reinforcement shall be assumed proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. I'll try to depict this in, in, in figural form as we progress in the singly reinforced concrete beam analysis. So, but the sense is there already. And the strain under 422.1.3 says in pre-stress concrete and in bandage. So this is actually at, uh, to be best discussed in uh, pre-stress concrete design. Uh, and then uh, 422.1.4 change in strain for banded pre-stress same as with the, the latter code. So this will be best discussed in pre-stress concrete design. But why did they include that? Kasi usually si code natin, dalawa lagi sinasabi niya. So don't forget that we have the pre-stress and the non-pre-stress. In our course, uh, we need to consider only the non-pre-stress type. So whenever you saw a code that is pre-stress, so therefore that will be of different topic. So it will be discussed in my, in my separate uh, channel, no? In uh, my I mean separate playlist under pre-stress concrete design. Under section 42.2.2, ito yung pinaka-importante, no? isa sa mga importante, that the maximum strain, okay, under 0.1 condition at the stream concrete compression fiber shall be assumed equal to 0 0.003. Ang sinasabi lang po nito, yung strain of concrete na kailangan natin consider at all times is 0 0.003. So therefore, we know that uh, the stress is a modulus times the strain. So sigma concrete, e concrete, e concrete. So, therefore, we can eventually calculate the required stress of concrete by allowing, multiply, say, norm for normal weight, so 4,700 square root of Fc prime, and then by multiplying square root of Fc uh, of sigma, okay, I mean uh, strain of concrete, 0 0.003. So, this will be your target performance. So, as you calculate that, ano. So, by that, so that will be an indicator that our required strength will be uh, of, of that particular boundary dependent on what is the FC prime in question, okay? So, di depende kayo. Kung gagamit tayo ng limit, no? Yung pinakamaliit na limit that is a square, uh, that, that is 21 megapascal. So, that would look like a uh, 64.6 megapascal. So, yan yung pinaka-expected target stress natin. So, if your FC prime is only 21 megapascal, so it varies. So, tensile strength of course shall be neglected in flexural and in actual strength calculation. Note that, kung naalala po ninyo sa, an, sa crack condition, okay, na let's say, uh, meron kayong titawag na beam na derecho, okay, ito po yung neutral axis, okay, tapos ito yung compression tension, hati sa dalawa yan, ano? Pero pag may bakal ka, at nag, nag, nagka-crack, as discussed on my past video lecture, na-explain ko na rin dyan, we need to eliminate the strength of uh, concrete under tension kasi ang kumakarga na itong mismong bakal na lang. Okay? Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng transformation of section. Yan, yeah, yung naging ganyan. It means this is just only sole concrete NAS. Kasi wala nang need yung ano. Wala tayong uh, target read dun para sa tension concrete. So, ganun din dito under UST. No? Under 422.2.3, sinasabi lang po dito, that the relationship between concrete compressive stress and strain shall be represented by rectangular, trapezoidal, parabolic, and other shape. Kasi po, ang stress, pag nasa USA, hindi na po siya linear. So, usually, ito na po yung nangyayari sa kanya. Okay? So, parang may portion na parabolic, may portion na linear, at saka may portion na elliptical. So, divided into three regions. At I will try to explain this in our next video lecture kasi dito na papasok. Yung conceptualization ng mga parts of that, uh, of the elements that we need to understand and analyze. Okay, but ito po ilalabas sa uh, titinitaw nating uh, stress diagram. Hindi po siya linear. So, proven po yan ng test na laboratorical. Maraming beses na po yung pinroom. Okay? Ngayon, may sinasabi sa 422.2.2.4, the equivalent rectangular concrete stress distribution in accordance with the section 422.2.2.4.1 and through 0.2.4.3 satisfies 0.2.2.3. Ang sinasabi lang po nito is you can only use the the codes within the section if you were going to only use rectangular stress block. Ibig sabihin, pag hindi kayo gumamit ng uh, rectangular stress block, you need to identify uh, new calculations or new ways of calculating the strength requirement. So therefore, that will be of uh, a different uh, 
testing methodology. So therefore, for you to adapt, no, the, the most of the chapter for topics, eh, kailangan mag-start ka lang sa simple analogy na ang stress block ay rectangular. I'll explain this in again in our next video lecture how to we consider it as a rectangular complete stress block. And for 22.2.24.4.1, okay? So therefore, yung A is equal to beta 1C, in-assume kasi na kapag kinonvert natin yung stress na ito, okay, is hindi siya tatama sa mismo neutral axis. Assuming that this is the height of the neutral axis, C. So, merong particular region na tatawagin natin at i-explain ko next time in, in our next video lecture, that is A, na yung A natin is always less than C. So, to make it equal, sabi ng math, to introduce a constant. By this, it is called as the beta 1 factor. At sinabi ng 422.2.2.4.2, distance from the fiber of the maximum compression strain, compressive strain to the neutral axis C shall be measured perpendicularly to the neutral axis. Ito po yung sabi ko, yung C na dinawin ko earlier. Yung big C kasi, lagyan natin ng, ano, ng dot. Sabi C dot means a force. Okay? While C is just only a, a height. Ito po yung treatment ng beta 1. Okay? If you're beta 1, if you're FC prime, dependent po, no, you say beta 1 kay FC prime. If your uh, beta 1 is in between 17 and 28, automatic 0.85. Kapag more than 55, it is 0.65. And if in between 28 to 55, you have to calculate in this way. So, dinirebe lang po ito gamit yung linear interpolation. Na maximum uh, strain, i, I mean, maximum uh, stress uh, constant should be not more than 0.85 and need not be less than uh, and Yes, need not be less than 0.65, okay? So, it is always, uh, I mean, need to be less than, uh, no, no, tama ko, need not be less than 0.65. So, kasi ito yung pinaka, ano eh, least, ito yung pinaka maximum, okay? So, the, the beta one should be uh, in between these two, Okay? Now, what are the design assumptions for non stress reinforcement? So, deform reinforcement po yung binibigay as we calculate. Then, yung ating gagamitin throughout the calculation. And the stress strain relationship is all, again, to be ideal as in accordance to 420.2.2.1 and, and, and until 420.2.2.2. So, this is an ating kanina yan. No? And pleasure strength, that's under general. So, nominal strength, tanda nyo po nominal. Ibig sabihin, raw, raw moment condition. So, ibig sabihin, the actual, no? y yung, yung moment na generate ng, uh, ng section. Di ba? Tandaan yung moment na dinerive natin before is just uh, T or, or pwedeng T times D o pwedeng sigma C kasi pwedeng sa measure of compression, pwedeng concrete, meron pang compression bar times D. Sabihin na natin ito ay di sa uh, perpendicular. Okay? Di sa perpendicular. Okay, so again, thanks for viewing. I hope you learned something new today. So next topic would now be one of the uh, starting interesting topic that a uh, student or a learner of reinforcement redesign should learn. That is what we call the uh, principle and analysis of a uh, singly reinforced concrete beam. Doon tayo magsisimula sa pag-analyze what if the tension is being reinforced. So again, thanks for viewing and uh, this would be our tradition again. So you have been neuroized and uh, see you in our next video lecture.